2024 had some interesting movies that were released. Good movies, some of them sequels, some of them new stories, you had from what to choose. And the year is not yet done, so more movies are gonna be on their way. But there was a film that I truly wanted to see in the cinema and I didn't have the chance. And with the first chance that I got, I watched it twice in one run. So yeah, I will definitely make a video about this film, right? Oh, and probably, it might look like a coincidence I will make a video about this film right after I made a video about The Dirty Dozen, which technically is another war film, but honestly, it is just a pure coincidence. Now, without further ado, let's talk about the most recent film made by Guy Ritchie, The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare. Guy Ritchie is a film director who is famously known for movies like Rock and Rolla, The Gentleman, Snatch or Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, movies that are representing, in a way, the gangster world of London. He is also known for the two Sherlock Holmes movies in which Robert Downey Jr. starred and The Man from Uncle, the spy film with Henry Cavill. His diverse style of filmmaking from gangster movies to detective adventures and spy movies made Richie one of my favorite film directors of these days. So when a trailer is released in which Henry Cavill and Alan Richson are starring and the film is made by Guy Ritchie, you instantly know that's a film that you cannot say you won't see. So jumping into the story, I knew what I was expecting and I knew the vibe and the style of the film. I was amazed by it, I enjoyed the film a lot. There are questions that I already had an answer to right from the beginning and that answer is, oh, you have no idea. The story of the film is set in late 1941, during World War II, and follows the story of a team of soldiers who work under the orders of Winston Churchill to find a way to slow down the German submarines and make a breach in their line, to create an advantage in the war. The film is a fictionalized version of the real-life Operation Postmaster, but it is based on a novel written by Damien Lewis which was released in 2014 called Churchill's Secret Warriors the explosive true story of the Special Forces Desperados of World War II. God, that's a long name for a book. Right from the beginning, there is something that takes the viewer into a context to introduce the story of the film, and right then and there, out of nowhere, the context throws the viewer in the middle of the action. If you are familiar with other films made by Guy Ritchie, this is his style. He creates suspense right from the beginning to attract the viewer's interest towards the film. And this time is no exception. The film starts with a group of Nazi marines who embark a boat in inspection. But as the unexpected is happening, the boat belongs to some rather interesting characters. They kill the marines and blow up the enemy's ship and from that, the film starts to unfollow. Richie is presenting the film in its own unique style using comedy, irony and the flair of the characters to tell the story. He presents two fronts of the mission, one with the crazy and unpredictable characters who are ready to burn the world down in order to complete their mission, and one in which the elegant and calm characters are doing the spy part of the mission, giving information and preparing the moment of the battle for the other characters to arrive. The story of the film creates an incredible combination between those two parts of the team and gives a certain rhythm to the film, making it feel like time flies way too easily. What I truly love is the way Richie is presenting the emotions of the two sides during the mission. The calm and elegant side of the team, represented by Hector and Marjorie, has a certain pressure to it because it is right there near the enemy and every wrong move could cost their life, so they act with extreme caution to fulfill their part of the mission, while the chaotic part, led by Marge Phillips, has a feeling of instant action and relaxation. Every time you see the man Phillips is leading, you feel relaxed because you can clearly see how they act and you have no worries when it comes to entering a conflict. And when those two parts of the mission meet with each other, the film instantly mixes the instant and the calculated element in a way that the viewer will not realize that it happened. Both sides of the story keep you in suspense and both sides of the story creates intrigue, which keeps the viewer focused on the film, making him see what is gonna happen next, if they will succeed to blow up the ship or not. Guy Ritchie knows how to build a story in a way to make it memorable and interesting. It doesn't matter what type of film he will make, there are quite a lot of moments that will remain in the viewer's mind one way or another. His comedic style is kinda like his trademark now, and when you start to see a film directed by him, you have to expect the characters will have a certain comedic value that will give them an interesting personality and make the characters be, well, memorable. 
The way Ricci presented this film's characters is the same as in his previous movies. You have the leader of the team, you have the rebel, you have the fin fatale, you have the wise man, you have the most despicable villain. The characters from this film are portrayed quite well by the actors, a thing that makes them instantly remarkable in the eyes of the viewer and represent the aura of the actors quite well. But the characters themselves are made so well that you truly feel their story arc and their actions differently. The way March Phillips and his team are acting is the best example of the comedic elements Reaching is using in his movies. When they are in the middle of a conflict, the way they use irony and sarcasm makes them look arrogant, mad and uncontrollable. But after all, this is their personality and this thing works in their context, it makes them be amazing. Each and every single one of them has a certain type of skills, making them unique. Each character has a certain element of madness which works well when they fight alone, but together it can clearly be seen why they were made so unpredictable and unstoppable. Marjorie is the type of character that, yes, as I said, is a femme fatale. She is elegant, smart and thanks to her heritage she has something that drives her to complete the mission. She is presented to know how to handle any type of gun so you know she can handle the pressure of the context. And being helped by Hector, who is a character with a certain flair that makes him be seen as a friend with anyone, who is calm and wise and takes his time to plan and fixes quickly the unpredictable issues that appear, Marjorie's story gives a certain sense of security to the whole danger in which she is sent to complete the mission. As for the villain of the film, Heinrich Lur, from the first moments he is presented on the silver screen, Richie makes sure he presents the character in the most hateful way. With any scene he shows in, the viewer can sense the danger, the unpredictable hate that can burst at any moment. You feel his hate, you feel his superiority. Richie presented this type of character quite well and he made sure the viewer feels and realizes what type of a person Lure is, with that single shot that gives shivers to anyone who sees it. But his demise at the end of the film felt rushed. In my opinion the demise was made a bit soft, but due to the context, the way it is made in a subtle way, even if it is made outside surrounded by soldiers who are focused on the stolen ship and the destroyed port, makes it okay, I guess. Not to be misunderstood, his demise is well deserved and Marjorie being the one who kills him is kinda like poetry and moral justice, but it felt a bit, I don't know, maybe a bit unsatisfactory. As for the side characters, and here I'm talking about Churchill, M and Ian Fleming, even though they appear much less than the main characters, their presence in the film truly gives a certain faith to the main characters. They are the ones who support the team in their mission, they are the ones who trust the team to get the job done, and to laugh about, if the team was crazy as it was presented, think about the guys who put their trust in them. The way they are represented as these characters who are willing to do anything to keep their freedom and honor intact, gives the main team the characteristics of saviors. What I truly like about Churchill and the other side characters is they do not change their mind when it comes to the mission. They had their chance a few times but they kept going even fought with their colleagues to keep their mission continuing. This small detail makes Churchill and the others to be like the heroes from the shadows and adds more heroic characteristics to the characters that already have the heavy heroic feeling from the real life counterparts and Churchill recognizing the team at the end of the film, solidifies not only the guys who went to fight and complete the mission as true heroes, but Churchill, M and Fleming as well. Uniting them solidifies the characters as a special and unbeatable team, with each and every one of them having its own role ready for any context, any time. From a cinematographic point of view, the film is not that special. The fight scenes are quite amazing to be honest and it kinda makes the viewer to be a dynamic participant at the battle moments of the film. The fights are well made and present each character with each of its skill in a different and dynamic way, which makes the film not become stale. However, the film is shot beautifully. It presents the elements the viewer has to see at the right time, the sound of the film is so clean and so amazing and the way it is edited is quite classic. From this perspective, the film is not that memorable. However, the way the film is presenting from a technical perspective the elements that make this great, like the comedic moments and the suspenseful moments, is what makes the film work. Richie is using the most basic cinematic language to show you what really matters in the scene. You see Marjorie steal the briefcase in the train scene, the film will cut to a close shot to make you understand she got the briefcase. The film wants to show you a comedic moment, the film will have a longer shot on the characters to see their reactions. 
the film wants to show you the greatness of the ship our team has to steal, there is a descriptive shot to show the viewer how big the ship is. There are basic elements that can be used in the creation of a film, and Richie is using them perfectly into his movies. He doesn't need to create amazing shots that should impress the viewer. Richie is using the character's reactions, or he plays with the suspense to create comedy and to create conflict and to level up the comedy level of a scene, like the shot in which Marge Phillips is killing the enemies without watching at them, or the scene at the beginning of the film in which the enemy ship is exploding in a surprising and spontaneous way, even if you know the ship has to explode. Those types of scenes are Richie's style and they are working. Of course, Richie is using some effects or special ways to film certain scenes to tell the viewer a certain message, like the slow motion scenes from the Sherlock Holmes movies, but in this case, Richie does not need to do anything incredible. He just presents the story as it is, he impresses you with his shots when it is necessary, it makes you laugh almost every time there is a chance, Richie is catching the viewer in his grasp with those methods and yes, they are working. The viewer sits there and is watching an action movie with comedy elements. That's it. And yes, it might enjoy every moment of the film exactly as the director wanted, with unpredictability and desire to know what is gonna happen next. There is something funny that makes me think of this movie more as a fan than as an aspiring creator. There were two things that made me want to watch this film. Guy Ritchie is the director, so being a fan of his work I was like, yeah, I'm gonna watch this. And the second thing it was, it had Henry Cavill and Alan Richson as two of the main characters, so yeah, definitely I wanted to see this film. Having Geralt of Rivia and John Reacher in the same film was something that I didn't know I wanted to see, and now I want to see more of it because the way those two actors work with each other is pure chemistry. For a more knowledgeable fan, the comparison of Gerard and Richard might be quite recent and fresh, so I could laugh with the small joke that we finally had the chance to see Superman and Aquaman having a great film together, if you catch my drift. But what is more funny to me, at least, is the way Guy Ritchie unknowingly connected Henry Cavill with the James Bond character, not with one film, but with two. The first film was The Man from Uncle, in which Cavill portrayed Napoleon Solo, an American spy during the Cold War, and since that film, the fans started to see Cavill as a prime candidate and proper actor to portray James Bond. In more than one way, Napoleon Solo was inspired from the stories of James Bond, but it was made to be less intense than the legendary English spy. It was a nice fan casting choice, which I can totally see as possible. Up to the time of this video, nothing is confirmed regarding the new actor who will play Bond, so nothing is confirmed. But somehow, Richie did it again. In this film, Cavill's character, Gus March Phillips, is noteworthy in real life to be considered one of the inspirations for Ian Fleming's popular character. I don't know, but having Harry Cavill portray the inspiration for James Bond, rather than the character itself, is more amazing and more memorable considering the whole desire of the fans. Somehow, Cavill orbited around this character for so long, it will be a shame if he will not portray the legendary 007 in the near future. He portrayed a character who was inspired from James Bond, now he portrayed a character who was one of the inspirations for James Bond. Is it just me, or is there a pattern somehow? If there will be a chance for Henry Cavill to play the famous 007 agent, I am pretty sure Cavill will be a great version of the character. If not, well, he played the original real-life character quite well. He didn't need to be 007 in order to play 007. Only time will tell if Cavill will be Bond. It will be more funny if the Bond film in which Cavill is in will be directed by Guy Ritchie, but who knows, maybe the future has something interesting prepared for us. At the beginning of the video I made a small joke regarding the channel, that is just a coincidence that I watched this film after I made a video about the Dirty Dozen, but honestly, I cannot stop to think about differences and similarities between those two movies, now that I mentioned it. Both The Dirty Dozen and The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare are war movies, and yes, they are made almost 60 years apart from each other, but they have the same formula at the base of the film. Both the movies present a team of misfits that have to complete a mission during World War II, but the way this formula was done is totally different. While The Dirty Dozen gives the viewer a lot of time to know the characters and to realize who they are, The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare throws the viewer in the middle of action with the characters and the viewer gets to know them as the movie goes on. Not to mention that the Ministry is taking the concept of crazy characters to a different level and presents them as… mad. 
while the dozen presents them just as unpredictable with different issues related to authority or personal issues. The Ministry is taking this concept of mad characters probably from the more popular Suicide Squad movies or from Quentin Tarantino's Inglorious Bastards, and it might be a possibility this film might be remembered as Guy Ritchie's version of Inglorious Bastards, a thing that I also had the impression when I watched the trailer for the first time. But after all, this might be a problem? I don't think so. Each film, either we talk about The Dirty Dozen, or Inglorious Bastards, or even The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare, is made differently and each film has a certain flair that makes the movie enjoyable, even if it is the same formula behind everything. This makes me come back to the idea of how a movie is made, because, after all, depending on the style of the director, a film which has a known formula can have a different feeling, has a certain rhythm and a certain vibe. In the end, however, each film is enjoyable in its own way and whether you might like to compare this film with others, it is up to you. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare is a film that truly is something else. It's like a breath of fresh air. It has something that makes you want to watch the film over and over again. It is not boring, it has a lot of action and a lot of comedic moments. This film checks a lot of boxes when it comes to a good quality film. From what I have seen, the film was a box office bomb and I try to understand why exactly the film flopped, because it had a solid cast and a great director. Probably due to the cast, people decided to play the safe part, because earlier this year another film called Argyle was released and that film promoted Henry Cavill quite a lot and he had just a small part in that film. So the people were probably angry because of that and didn't want to watch this film. Who knows? The whole Argyle story is something to talk about in another video, but I think that it affected this film a bit. Nonetheless, what Guy Ritchie did here with this film is something worth watching. I truly hope people will see this movie on streaming services or buy the movie to watch it at home and enjoy it. With a lot of amazing actors, a lot of action and a good story, Guy Ritchie gives the viewer a chance to see a story that takes you back into a film style and into a time period that created legends. Richie has a certain style to tell a story and I think this type of story couldn't be told by someone else that well. He created an atmosphere with a couple of characters and made the viewer jump into a context that can keep the viewer stuck there with the characters. The craziness of the team, the dynamic and flair is what sells this movie. And those are the things the viewer will remember about this film. The film will be stuck into your mind for a long time and this is the thing that makes a movie memorable. If you can remember moments, lines or a song that was used in a movie, the movie did its job. It's out there, known by the people. The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare is that type of film. And is the type of film that makes you want to rewatch it again and again and again. It's not a complicated film, but is a film well made with a lot of ideas and themes that make the film worth watching. As I said earlier, it might be remembered as Guy Ritchie's version of Inglorious Bastards or Suicide Squad, but I do not see a problem in that. Those movies can be recognized on their own, but this movie, this movie is Guy Ritchie's. It has his signature all over it. And that is what makes it unique and special at the same time.